All right, uh, greetings, everybody. Look, I got my best hair on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, here we go. Um, after doing whatever it is you do throughout the week, uh, you guys all get invitations to the bar where the uh, constable of the keep wants to speak to a select few people. And uh, your group is chosen along with uh, that other group that always appears at the weirdest time. Um, I want to go on record. I did not do it. I have no affiliation with them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys meet at the bar. Uh, Nate's there. Queef. Oh. Um. I say Queef entirely too much. <laughs> uh, queef's there, and he says, hey, guys, uh, this round's on me. Uh, you notice that he's got the tallest mugs of ale set up for all of you guys, a private table off to the side, and uh, come on over. He's got something uh, important to tell you guys. It's a money-making opportunity. Ooh, yeah. Uh, as you are all sitting in to hear what Nate has to say, the constable enters the bar. And he says, uh, okay, so there's only a few of you here. Uh, what I need from you is a most delicate matter. It needs to be kept under wraps nobody should in the town needs to know until we figure things out but one of the uh, trade masters was murdered last night and uh yeah we need to uh, need you guys to figure it out uh yeah everybody is under suspicion but uh our acting uh hmm our acting resident sheriff is at the uh at the manor, and uh, we we'd ask that you guys go there and help him out. He's got he's down to six people who he thinks is the best suspect and best motive for the murder, and we'd like you to go there, question them, and figure it out because we want to make sure uh, this is like I said a trade master. If if this gets out. Uh, who knows, the economy inside the keep could crash and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's your task for okay. the day. Just then, Nate says, hey, guys, I've got an inside scoop. Uh, I think I know who killed the person. And I've also got this stuff here. He reaches into his pocket and he pulls out. A vial, one with a red substance in it, and one with a black substance in it. Uh, there's a piece of paper wrapped around one of the vials. And he says, okay, so what's going to happen here is, and just then something, he starts to contort and convulse, and, uh, and his eyes roll into the back of his head. As he sits there and starts to suffocate on his own vomit. Nate is dying in front of your hands. Yeah, in front of you. Uh, uh, thief Terry. Terry, uh, mm, I'll just give it to you. you. You look around. You notice that it's not natural. And as you look on the uh, balcony to the in rooms at the top, you see a cloaked figure darting off into the the room and getting ready to jump through a window. Uh, you guys uh, can comfort Nate. He's dying. He's going to die. <laughs> he said okay, so I'm going to call shot this. I'm okay, going to attempt to hit the cloaked figure in the leg with one of my throwing daggers. Uh, okay, well, you can throw. You better roll a 20. Yeah. I figured as much, but I figured why not give it a try. You could give chase. Not a twenty. Nice. No, he said not a twenty. Oh. 
<laughs> I said kind of 20. <laughs> no, I thought I got a 20. I'd have to move the camera down. <laughs> like, no, nah, it actually happened. Uh, okay, well, that person is escaping. Um, yeah, so what do you do? There's... Can I get changed? Uh, Nate dies in front of you. Everybody's going. <gasps> I give chase out the bottom of the bar. Okay, you didn't see it. Oh, I didn't see it. Okay. Um, I will attempt to give chase. Okay. I uh, will uh, restore Nate. Can I do that? Use a restoration spell. Uh, mm, it's not. Yeah, go ahead if you want. You might get a couple minutes out of him, but he's just going to die in agony. Uh, oh, screw it. Is it. Is it cold? He's dying. He's dying. If you look he's around, dying. you'll see a dart stuck in his neck. So definitely a poison. So. Uh, Terry, as you give chase, the night is thick with patchy fog. The day before, it rained really hard, and it was a hot rain. So there's a lot of uh, patchy fog. Uh, you do see the uh, you 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 peek your head out the window and you see the character running down the rooftops along the uh, top edge of the rooftops. Uh, do you wish to continue? Yes. Now, as I'm giving chase, can I use? Like, while I'm running, can I attempt to throw more daggers into the sun bitch? Yeah, you can try. Okay. So, yeah, I am still giving chase and also trying to impale him with daggers. Okay. Well, uh, roll, roll a hit. Uh, 18 so, on the die, so... Yeah, that hits. Okay. Um, you, because of the fog and the patchiness, you, you managed to... Don't do that. You think it's a leg. But, uh, you know, it kind of stumbles, but he's still going. Your you said that Nate had a arrow in his neck, or a dart in his neck, right? Yes, ma'am. So, we should... I mean, he's going to die either way, but we should take the arrow or the dart out so we can... we got to wait till after he gets some given chase to the bad guy here. Oh, okay. They're in the middle of something. No, they're okay. What? Well, so we can maybe try to figure out who did it. That's a great idea. If we take the arrow out and see if we can figure out where it came from, or the dart out. Okay. You know what uh, I mean? Let me uh, finish up with Terry here. Oh. Um. Okay, so uh, your dart grazes your dart, damn it. Your uh, <laughs> dagger grazes the leg, and they kind of stumble, but they don't lose too much of a step. Um, you see them jump as if they were jumping over to another rooftop. Do you wish to pursue? Yes, rolling will be involved. But you are a thief, sir. That's why yeah, I gave this test it. to you. Sure. What am I rolling? Are you gonna roll your decks? Uh here, I just I'll just call it. You need a ten. Ten with or without mod? Uh with if you want, doesn't matter. Yeah, I pass. Okay. Uh, quite quite easily, in fact. You, you guys aren't don't see this, but you heard the thumping of somebody running across the roof. Uh, you you make the jump. It's on a building that's near the, near the tavern. Uh, that figure is still running off. You see it turn one way and looks like it jumps over to another building. Uh, it disappears kind of in the fog. So, do I notice a blood trail from where my knife hit my dagger hit and caught him? Uh, it doesn't seem to slow down any. I'm talking about the blood trail so I can easily track him. Uh, 
Mm, it, it's kind of dark right now, and you're running, so I'm not gonna say yet. See anything right yet? You wish to continue. Now I'm gonna break off. Okay. Uh, going back to the tavern or what? Looking for the blood trail? No, the blood trail will come in later. Uh, now go back to the tavern. Okay. Uh, I need to know about Crawl, Berber, and Greybeard here. Are you guys grieving? Oh. We are grieving, but we are angered. Amber I'm is looking. Ang I'm angered, and I want to find who did this. So I'm going to pull the dart out and try to figure it out. Yes, I'm grieving. Looks like you're sleeping, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very upset. I'm, uh, yeah, I, got, I'm uh, I was going to uh, scan the area for any kind of clues or objects to give me a clue on who did this. <laughs> Okay, well, you guys aren't going to be able to tell who did this from just a single little dart. No. Nope. Uh, and it was done assassin style, so good luck. Uh, well. But uh, a quick reveal of the dart. Uh, it, it smells bad. It might be a poison. It might be a paralytic. It might be something. You'll have to take it to an expert on poisons to figure that out. And you only have one in the group left. So, One in the group left of what? Somebody that's an expert in poisons. Oh. And that would be the other thief in the group. Yeah, the other thief. So Terry would be another expert. Oh, he can poison. identify poisons, right? He can... Tell if something's a poison or not, just by the look and smell. Yes. So we gotta get. We gotta find Terry. Is he still up on the roof? Well, no, he returned to the bar. Yeah, he's oh, in the right. bar. Yeah, Terry's hanging with us now. Well, come on. This is where you guys go at it. So. Yep. So Terry, when when you gave chase, did you uh, have any? Hints on who the assassin might be or where he was going. No, I did manage to wound him slightly, and I didn't even slow him down. So it's um. Well, I think we should go search. Well, why don't we give him the dart so he can tell us if it's poison or not? Okay. Well, it's already dead, but we can see if it's poisoned, and then maybe be able to track down who. Well, so I'm saying because we could like see if we can find a little information out about it, then maybe on our travels, you never know, we could come across something that might spark a clue. He did die yep. with two things in his hand, actually three. Uh, you know, I said there was a, a a vial with red powder and a vial with black powder, and That's around right. the black powder was a note of sorts. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna grab those vials and find out what that note says. No, they're they're small vials, like you know, they can fit in your pocket. Um, yeah, the the vials just look like they're filled with some kind of powder, and the note is actually a torn piece of paper. Uh, there's a couple of names. You think they're names on them? Uh, they're kind of ripped, but you can make out one name is Malachi. And the other one appears to be maybe a Will, uh, a William, mm -hmm. a Willard. You don't know. It's W I L L and something else. You can't really make it up. But that's all that's written on there. Meanwhile, uh, before this, the constable came in and he. Mm -hmm. The uh, guy that died, his name was Malachi, by the way. 
funny how that works. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, so we got the red and black uh, vials that was on Queef when he died. We got the guy coming in asking him about to do a job. We have, have we identified the poison on the dart? Has anyone identified the poison on the dart yet? Um, do you want to identify the poison, Terry? Without having to ingest it? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Okay. You're a thief. Okay, then yeah. Or make somebody else ingest it. <laughs> yeah, see what happens. Hey, Custable, come here real quick. Yeah, yeah Custable. <laughs> uh, it smells foul. It's, it's, it's a poison that you are not familiar with, but it acted so violently and quickly with Nate, your uh, rather peaked interest in it. So... It is a, uh, you can tell that it's from the Nightshade family, and that's about it. You don't know anything else. But you would desperately like to get your hands on that formula. Oh, yeah. All right, so now we should, uh, well, I feel that we should, uh, what was the quest that the commissioner tried to give us before all this happened? Yeah, well, there was a murder. Oh, yeah, it was a murder. Yeah, We're supposed to the investigate guy, the murder. The, the guy's Malachi's. name was Malachi, which was also on the note around the vial. Oh, yeah, and one the of them had of Will somebody. So we have to try to find this Will somebody or... We should just go figure out... Go track down a blood, a blood trap in the daytime the, from the wound and try to find this assassin or go try to track down Will. We'll just go, just just go investigate the murder, and see what kind of information we get while we're doing it. it seems to be related, all related. Would Terry be able to identify what's in the vials? Maybe. Could ask him. Can you, Terry? <laughs> Identify what's in the vials. Can I be him? Yeah, uh, you can. Uh, you, as a thief, you can identify any poison. Right. Or identify just, something right. that is a poison. Right. That's basically what I'm asking. Are they poison? Oh, uh, well, the little black vial is smells very similar to uh, the dart that was in the. Yeah, that was on the dart. So it's probably a a powdered version. Or a form of what killed him. The uh, red stuff in the uh, vial is just a powder. It has no smell, and you're really not familiar what it is yet. So. Some kind of nightshade or something that killed this guy. Killed Queef. Poisoned. Somebody wanted Queef dead. So. Okay, so someone wanted Queef dead. Who wanted Queef dead? He had these in his pockets. One said Will, one said Malachi. Yeah, they both said it was the same paper. Well, same paper said Will, said Malachi. Malachi is dead. We don't know who Will is yet. So we need to investigate the murder. Malachi of murder. So anyone else um, agree that we go investigate where this murder took place? We start on our travels that way. How much powder is in each of the vials? Uh, I'd say <laughs> providing they're both used like that, probably a couple doses in both. both. Uh, you don't know for sure about the poison. There might be a hundred in there you, you don't know. You have to figure out more about the black stuff, the poison. But the red, two doses. How long have we been laying on the ground? <laughs> well, uh... I don't know. Let's just say an hour. Well, they want that idea. 
Well, I can make it a half an hour. I mean, what do you want? No, I needed to be like minutes past, not increments of time. Okay, well, it's only been a few minutes. What do you want to do? I'm glad I can turn back time. Fair enough. Uh, on a, without touching it, using the tip of a God, knife, not a dagger, but an actual, like, knife, oh, you're just not getting I'm going today. to take some of the red powder and put it inside the piece mouth. You're going to mix the red, the red powder with the black powder? No, putting some, like, half a dose of the red powder in Queef's mouth. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, his mouth turns red. <laughs> <laughs> Pour some ale into a tube, that way it goes down the throat. It says, it you're right, it's powder. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fine. You guys see the thief doing weird shit to Nate's body. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Hey, cleric. Yeah. Do some clerky things. Oh, what? Yeah. Let's, let's, you know, get, get a sermon going on in here and see if we can raise his body. After like a couple minutes go by, I just kind of stand up, clap my hands, and go, well, not an antidote. <laughs> Eliminated that possibility. Not an antidote. So should I... The, He's trying to play his name to raise his body. Am I coming back with the restoration spell? Should I try to... Will that cure his poisoning and then he'd be... Or is he dead already? He's dead. He's been dead. He's done. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> but you can still try to raise his body with your churchy element going to you. What? I can't bring him back from the dead, I don't think. I mean, yeah, next time, give him, level to next do time do a little chant, you know? Give a little... Give a little <laughs> In my world, there is no coming back. This I, is the really real world. I can help him ascend into heaven. I can't bring there him you back. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Let's say a couple of words for our fallen queef. <laughs> Queefer, we miss you. <laughs> yep. Good luck. I never known another man named Queef before until I met you. Sometimes you, you can still hear him in the wind. <laughs> Every time I hear the creak of the door, I'll think of you. <laughs> oh, oh, you can see where this gets off real Anybody quick. watching this uh, on replay, put in your best queef comment below. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No way you okay. can see this one coming. <laughs> yeah, well. I, I, I'm looking at like my spells. I can't think of anything. No, no. There, there's nothing you can do for him. No, what I meant is like there's a dead body there and you want to keep people from desecrating it. You want to be a minister. You want to be. Well, I've always had a body. I can give him a proper oh, burial. So I'm going I'm to give him his last rites and I'm going yeah, to. So I want to technically search his body to see if there's anything worth value on it that we can scavenge. Yeah, I have to get with Nate with that. <laughs> He's got his character sheet. Okay, well, let's let's preserve his remains and mummatize him somewhere. <laughs> we, this is not going to be good. Then we can go uh, venture on and check out this Malachi's uh, death. I'd say you drag him outside and throw a match on him. All right. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I second that. I was like, it sounds like a waste of time. All right, so Queef's outside, right buried outside the bar. Okay. Or no, burnt. We're burning his body right outside the bar. Okay. Wait, is that I, was, I was joking. I, I would not advise you doing that. <laughs> oh. Well, I've been keeping a chapter log here, so I know where I'm at. <laughs> this is not something you would do in a real town. I hope so. <laughs> Maybe in your backyard with the soap. Okay, fine. Let's go bury him real quick. Let's go bring him to the uh, burial grounds and mummify him and bury him here. And loot him. We got to take his stuff. Well, we got to try to preserve him. We're not supposed to take his stuff yet. He might come back to life in some future weird occurrence as a zombie. Right. 
So we're all at Nate's funeral. Put them <laughs> on the ground. Um, take you here lies there. Queef, the unexpected surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad you guys are going to miss out on that money-making opportunity he had. But he left you with some kind of clue on how to do that. Meanwhile, you have to go... Why are we missing out on the money making opportunity? Because no one said let's go make that money. I did. Oh. Okay. Well, look, you've been asked to do a job by the sheriff. I suggest you do that first. Who okay. knows? Those two things might run together. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Yep. Okay. So I'm saying let's go investigate this Malachi's death. Giant quest arrow appears above your head. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the remedial. D and D class. <laughs> um, just go with it. If yeah. I give you a task, go do the task. Um. Okay, so uh, it was a lovely service. Uh, Graybeard showed up in rare form, giving his best eulogy of the <laughs> the queef. queef. That's hard to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, nobody showed up with you guys, but you know. Uh, oh, oh yeah, Scab. Scabs was there. The uh, the guild guy. I do want to talk to Scab. I was about to actually go into that. Okay. I want to present the dart to him, tell him, uh, be extremely careful with that. Um, can he identify better what that poison is? He says, uh, let me hold on to it and I can get back to you on that. He knows just the person to take it to. Hand it over. Okay. He says, I'll get back to you in a couple of days. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, you guys don't know that. That's medicine. No. Uh, okay, so you guys want to go to the uh, place of the murder, or are there some other things you'd like to do beforehand? Also, I completely forgot, but apparently the session I missed, somebody in the party picked up a ring. Yeah. No, that yeah. Was me. Nope. I think that was me. Was yeah. It? Yep. Amber picked your Berber picked up a ring back. I, I don't know. I gave you all the information. Okay. Now you're an apprentice with the mage in town. Some. That's kind of how I understand how that inner that relationship is. Yeah. What's it's called Berber, like yeah. Apprentice and whatnot. Wherever he's speaking to you. Yeah, I don't know what the question is. I didn't hear half of it. The wizard in town, you're an apprentice of? Or yeah. Or something like it? Yeah. I would recommend uh, you have them look at that thing. Yep, take that to your okay. mentor. Okay. So, since we're in town, you want to take that ring to your mentor? Yep, I can do that. Uh, okay, well, before you head off to the uh, manor, to the, the place where the murder took place, uh, you stop by and you talk to uh, Sorceress Valinda. I did give her a name, finally. It's like Valinda with a B, only it's Valinda with a V. Valinda. Yeah. So some... Some quick little metagame completely out of character just for the sake of um, learning the game. When you get things like that that are just random, uh, I don't know if she's high enough level to be able to even sense faint magic trails or not. I.e. along the lines of like detect magic or something like that. Um, but anytime you get something like that, especially because you have a above you uh, master i'd have them inspect the items that you think might be magical 
simply okay. because you don't have the ability right now to identify or even detect magic. So it would help streamline a couple of things to basically filter out, yep, this is junk, this is just, you know, sell it for profit, or wait a minute, this is equipment that one of our members might actually need. Okay. Sounds yes, good. Belinda is good at identifying magical things. Okay. Okay, okay, cool. So you take your ring, I'm yep. still going to make you try them out to figure out what they are. Because that's part of the fun. Okay. Yeah, oops, this one's a fireball. We set it off in a wooden town. Oops. <laughs> are you still going to hold that over me? Mm. <laughs> um. <laughs> it only happened like four times. Yeah. It was my back. <laughs> okay, so you stop by Belinda's place, and she goes, "What do you want, worm?" <laughs> I'd like you to check out this room. Tell me if it's magical or not. Is there anything yeah. significant about it? Go fetch me my glasses. They're in the basement. Okay. <laughs> Clean up the steps on your way down. Squash the attitude. <laughs> wow. This is how she is. She's very kind. And you're not. You're not an independent mm. wizard yet. Yeah. Sure. Sorry. You're. You're hers for seven years. Yes, ma'am. Going to get your glasses right now. Okay. Uh, you walk downstairs. Uh, it's very dusty. It's dirty. It's drank. There's books everywhere. And scrolls and papers. And looking around, you find her glasses. As you take her glasses back up, um, yeah, you, you, she goes, oh, It's about time. I could have aged in her 20 years as long as you took. <laughs> grabs her glasses and goes, what do you want now? I want you to tell me if this ring is magical. Goes, <laughs> yeah, figures you wouldn't know. And she looks at it. She thumbs around. Oh, it's definitely magical, hunt. Hmm, how'd you get this? And she looks. Hmm. And she does some things and she rubs the top of it. And the the silver of the top of the ring fades away and there's a eyeball there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a beast eye. I'd say like a cat's eye, but I don't want to be cruel to cats. You know, that kind of mm -hmm. eye. Some okay. kind of little fiend eye. She goes, yes, it, indeed it is magical. Well, you're so Great, why don't you figure it out? She hands it back to you. Okay. So, I need to yeah. figure out what the ring does. So I put the ring on, I point it at the ground, and I try my best to make magic come out of it. Are, are, are you going to put it on? Yeah, yeah, might as well try it. Let's go. All right. Maybe I should go outside, though. I mean, yeah. I mean I'm probably or, in a house. I mean, that's just the scenario what I would say, but. Um, hmm. In fact, when you put. In fact, you know what? As you put it on, just point it right at her. What's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> yep. No, would you put it on and because it's got an eyeball in it, so it might be a seeing, so you might be able to read people's minds or. Be able to see into the future or the past or right. so go outside and practice with your ring or point it at a feral okay, cat. I know what it is. Point um, it at the cat? I don't want to point it at a cat. Okay, cool. There you go. So tell me how you're going to test out this device. Um, I'm going to go. You do put I'm it gonna, on, correct? I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go outside. Um. It magically fits your finger perfectly. Yep. And um, <laughs> help me. 
You're good at this. I can't. I can't help you. No. Put uh, the ring on. I see visions. You put the ring on. So far, like nothing this. happens. Yeah, nothing happens. You nothing put the ring happening. on, you have to wait for Big Brother to tell you what happens. You're just trying it out. Okay, fine. So you put the ring on, nothing happens. Fantastic. Now what do you do? Do you take the ring off? Do you do you try to say some commands? Do you put the ring on and hold it up to the sky and close your eyes? <laughs> rub it. Rub the rub the ring. the ring. That's a good one. I like I'll rub it. Give it a little rub. Maybe it's eyes or or closed, so I just need to open it. Give right. it a little rub. I, I put the ring on, close my eyes, concentrate really hard, I rub the ring. <laughs> He's just laughing. I'm not going to get crude. Um, yeah, I know. It sounded bad. <laughs> I, rub I the told ring you I was throat. bad with my imagination, man. I'm not good when at you, this. Uh, when you close your eyes, you... you feel like a an animal running through the jungle and then it'll cut to you flying above the treetops and looking off and seeing wings and those visions just kind of repeat so it's like a bird's eye view So I think that you have bird's eye view. That's what it sounds like to me. You have a ring that holds the power of bird's eye view. That's pretty cool. Hey, you need to figure out how to activate it. Didn't it already activate? I'm seeing vision. No, you're just seeing visions. The magic's not working. <laughs> just because you can see vision doesn't mean control it or anything. Uh, I don't know what that ring is. Um, Outside of the game, of course, but... Yeah, it takes it not your uh, your your frustration in figuring it out. It's a normal for anybody in DD that has to figure out what the hell they have. Some DMs will just come out and tell you, "I won't." Okay, so right now I'm just gonna take it off. And okay. huh? I said okay. It's good that you tell me that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to take it off and put it in my bag right now and try to figure it out later. Okay. Maybe at a time where I'm going to need it, it will come to me. Okay. Uh, I, I sold off all my stuff. I say we go investigate this unless no one else wants to stop and uh, see the town keep or anything. I say we go investigate this Malachi's death. You are in the town keep, Mike. Oh, okay. Well, unless anyone else wants to. It's just a walled city. Yeah, we're inside the keep. I was saying the shops and anything like that. If anyone else wanted to explore anything else in the keep. is the mur Did the murder take place inside the keep? No, it took place inside his home. Okay. okay. So, so I say we travel to Malachi's home. Say yep. Objections. No objection. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Trying to see if it's what I, what I remember it being. Well, no, I just came up with it on the. Oh god. Oh god. So it's not the. Not, I think it was back at the DMG. I think. Yeah, D and D is half planning and half pulling it out of your ass. So there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Uh, it doesn't help. No, it doesn't. No, that's, I'm not here. Okay, I wrote it down. Uh, Greybird, is there anything you wanted to do before you head off to the manor? I can't think of anything that would be... I'm trying to get you engaged. I know. I'm just listening for now until I think I got to move. 
Okay. <laughs> I would suggest you guys stop by Munchburger's house. He is the trade uh, guild master. He's over all of the trades in town. Oh, that's right. And this was a tradesman. Uh, so he can tell you about uh, Malachi and the two other biggies. Well, one other biggie. In town Those are the trades that he probably has some goods to sell as well, right? Do what? He's a tradesman too, so he probably has some goods to sell. Yeah, this is the guy you've been doing business with since you've been here. Okay. Sweet. Let's go see him. So I got twenty two silver. He doesn't really have anything outside of what you've already seen. Yeah. He uh, winks at Terry while trying to not get Greybeard's attention. <laughs> when Greybeard has his back to him, then he looks over to Terry and winks. Lunch Monster does? What's his name? Burger. Munchburger, Munchburger. but I don't know what happened. Never mind. <laughs> yep. So you're walking with a bit of a limp. No. No, this guy's big, robust. Boy, fun fact: I'm gonna ask you that question multiple times. Okay. Oh, well, I got you. Uh, no. No limp. No limp. So why, while Greybeard is um, back still, not paying attention, he's going to a brunch, uh, brunch, a brunch. Yeah, you know, a brunch. <laughs> brunch. Uh, approach, uh, munch, and ask him what business he has with me. Uh, he reaches out with his hand as to shake your hand. I uh, shake his hand. All right. And he says, uh, I'm glad to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Come talk to me later. In your hand is a very small leather pouch. So with um, using, I'm a rogue, so I insert any of the rogue skills here. I just kind of... Put well, it it's, in. it's definitely illegal. It's definitely a powder. You know it as moon powder. Yep. I just immediately drug. put it in my pockets without anybody seeing it. Okay. Okay. Uh, he looks at you and he says, um, he tells you about Malachi. Malachi is... Uh, he was a tradesman. He knew how to build things. He knew how to build uh, really off-the-wall things. But he made good money with some of his inventions. Uh, he also was a uh, – he was very skilled in trading to some of the bigger cities. You, you're not in a big city right now. You're not in a small one, though, like where you guys came from. This is a decent sized one, but it's not the big cities. But this guy had contacts in those big cities, so he'd get big city stuff in. And it really bothers him that he he now has to find somebody else, probably himself, that has to go uh, make connections and start all over and stuff. Uh, he he really he really seems genuine in the fact that he now has to do all the work and stuff like that. He was, it was easier just to deal with this guy, Malachi. Uh, I'm going to ask him, uh, obviously, you know, when you trade with the big cities, you take, you know, 
money away from other people, so naturally you're going to acquire enemies. Have you seen or heard about him getting into any open arguments with any travelers, any passers throughs, or even somebody in the town that you know could lead to well, somebody killed him? Well, he wasn't liked by anybody. No, he was a rough and stern man. He didn't talk. Yeah, he he only cared about his inventions. He he loved them, and he didn't like anybody else. Included his family. I find it really strange that his family all gathered yesterday morning and he winds up dead that night. Mm, family question. I mean, there was a family reunion, yeah. There there's okay. that. It, it wasn't me. I wanted to do business with him. I'm the one that got the town constable to look for able bodies to go figure out who killed him so we can exact justice and maybe I can find some uh, uh, beginnings on where to go find some new contacts. Hell yep. Does it say if you need to take a nap or something, you can go on a spell and I can take this into the dungeon? Yeah, if you want to. Okay. Since we're here, you guys continue doing your business. Amber is uh, down for the count. I am going to take this back into my dungeon, <laughs> which is meaning the other room. Not feeling well. Amber just not feeling well. All of a sudden stopped feeling good, but I'm going to carry on and keep notes for her. Okay. Mm. So I'm going to take your book. Unless you need it, I'll just keep notes on mine on the other side. What happens to you after okay. something? Because something just happened to her. She stumbled across something inside here. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to mute you until you get yes. back to where you're going. Yeah. yeah, I'll mute myself. Here we go. Okie dokie. Um, yeah, so. All, road, all roads are leading to the manor, pretty much. Nobody likes this guy. Nobody got along with this guy. He kept his secrets to himself. He's a very icy and cold-blooded man. Nobody's really sorry that he's dead. <laughs> it's that kind of person. What can uh, you tell us about Will? Is that another tradesman? Uh, he doesn't know anybody by the name of Will. Not that he knows anyway. Maybe it's one of his family members. Oh. Was the family staying in the manor with him? Does the custom... Constable or anybody know where the family that come into town was staying? Were they staying at the inn? Oh no, they're Were all they staying with him. Staying, they're staying at the man. The manor is actually a fairly large place. The trade keepers they they got big houses, so everybody's staying there. It's a it's a good like eight ten room manor. Okay, this guy was well to do, as all the tradesmen are. The guild guild heads are. I'm going to start heading toward the manor, but not on the main road leading to it. I'm going to approach the manor with the thought of, if I were going to break in, how would I? I got and you. And try to expose a weakness and see, investigate from there. Okay. Well, Gray Beard, as you and uh, the rest of the gang are heading up to uh, the manor, you see... Uh, Harry, break off. Thanks. So I, I would probably assume he's casing the joint. Hmm. Yeah, that's a that's fair assessment. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe uh, knowing that he's doing that, I would still approach the front door and try the more direct route while he's looking for an indirect route in case okay. in case we need two different approaches. Um, there are two, mm, I'll just call them policemen. 
they're not really policemen, but two dudes in armor out front, swords, you know, policemen. Uh, they're saying uh, the constable's inside and he's waiting on you. So oh. uh, they open the door. All right. I guess we're going to find the constable and the family. And As you uh, walk up to this manor, let me give you a description. Uh, it's, it's a manor. You can see it from the main road. Another port of the house. He's in the east wing now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a long driveway. In the driveway, it, since it was raining yesterday, it's it's pretty muddy driveway. You know, there's some rocks here and there, but uh, there's a hmm, a coach in the. Uh, in the driveway. Yeah. It uh, has no reins on it. There's no horses attached or there's no horse print, horse footprints around, hoof prints. Yeah. Uh, it's just there. Closer inspection of this vehicle, for better lack of terms, is uh, you see gears. Various sets of gears and cogs underneath it that attach, that are attached to both axles. Uh, like it was mentioned before, Munchbugger said this guy was an inventor. Uh, he invented a lot of weird crap, and this is one of them. Uh, yeah, so that thing is bogged down into the mud, probably due to weight or something broke or who knows. You've never seen anything like it. It's cool and demonic at the same time. I don't know. You can get your own vibes from how you wish. Um, yeah, so there's that. Oh, yeah, and it's luxury line, by the way. It's got, you know, silk curtains and pretty gilding. It's nothing gold-covered. It's nothing that you're going to want to rip off. But, uh, and I wouldn't advise doing that anyway. Uh yeah, so, you know, it's over the top. The guy was rich. So, you know. Awesome. Place so, is beautiful. You see that on the, the driveway going up. And there's the two policemen, as it were. And they open the door saying, uh, the constable's inside waiting on you guys. Go figure this shit out, please, so we can go home. Well, I guess we continue to find the constable and the family. Well, the constable, did, did you just say the constable was there? So go yeah. ahead and search. All right, well, you, you missed a little bit of it. Uh, okay. You guys have been pretty much just ushered up to the manor. Uh, as you'll all find out, I'll get to you in a minute here, uh, Terry. Um you walk in, and the whole family are, is in the uh, gathering era, er, arena area. Yeah, area, I guess. Uh, a living room of sorts. It's where everybody gathers books everywhere, smoking, you know, that kind of thing. Men talk men stuff. Women talk women stuff. Uh, everybody's sitting there. There are six people that you've never seen sitting there. And the constable, you can tell who he is because, A, Mike works for him. And uh, you've seen him around before. You, you, you know, when, when Nate got busted, he was there. Yep. Uh, so he says, uh, uh, oh, greetings. Well, uh, hey, uh, I, I know one of these people's a murderer. I've already let everybody go that uh, wasn't here that wasn't a part of it that uh yeah one one of these six people caused it and and, and i'm working on it but uh I, I might need a little extra finesse in finding who did it i have my own theories but 
I was told that I required your help, so help me. Okay, so one of the six family members, or these people, um, these six people are who in relation to the deceased Malachi? You got a pen and paper because you're going to need to take notes. I That's just pretty much what I do when I play, is I okay. just write it down because then I go back through it. That's it helps the imagination too, and then to keep notes and to keep track. So, yeah. yep, I'm ready uh, to go. Oh, damn it. Okay, well, I'm not ready to go because I'm an idiot. Let's see. Sorry about that. The wife, she just uh, wasn't feeling very well, and I figured uh, instead of her struggling through the game. Yeah, that's cool. I kind of get that she's not having much fun. <sighs> well, she was, but. She- she spaced out a bit and wasn't feeling good. And... Uh, okay, so the following people are the suspects. Okay. Oh, uh, I need to tell Terry before we get going. Uh, Terry, you find the, the back door. It's left wide open. Uh, outside the back door are muddy boots. Uh, the boot prints look like they can match some of the boot prints that were around the coach. But that's all. Uh, as far as an easy way to get into the house, there's there's all kinds of easy ways. You look at everything and say, well, hell, I could climb that, that tree there, and this right here. I mean, you pick it apart. So... But the biggest thing is the back door is wide open and muddy boots are sitting outside on the little porch thing. Okay, now inside. Constable says, uh, let me introduce you to the players of hand. One is uh, Grandma Stout. Uh, Malachi's last name was Stout. So uh, well, they just call her Grandma Stout. Okay. She's a very prim and proper icy bitch of a woman. She, uh, she, nobody likes her either, really. <laughs> okay. There's Penelope Clarington. She is the daughter of Malachi. She likes to flaunt her wealth, and she's very la da about things. Okay, so she's a little spoiled brat, a little hip. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, conniving, yep. She's, she's a suspect, okay. Mortimer Stout. Mortimer is Malachi's son. Uh, he's very business oriented he's always thinking numbers he's really only worried about how wealthy he is he doesn't care about anybody else uh he did get along with his dad to some degree but really he he doesn't it's it's all about money and business he never takes a day off that kind of guy okay there is monica stout Monica is married to Mortimer. Wife. Okay, number one right there. Uh, Monica Stow is... Uh, she She truly loves her man. The, the guy that doesn't... You know, that's all business. But she <clears throat> truly loves him. Drives his man. And she's trying to love the other members of the family. But it's very difficult. Okay. And she's she's carefree and bubbly. She's the light of every room. She she uplifts everybody. She's a a good old gal, I guess. Uh, she done it. <laughs> There's Uncle Edwin Stout. Uh, some people say he's not right in the head. Uh, after the war, he's 
he's had problems. Uh, he's been known to uh, do things and not know he did them. Oh, blackout. Really black not sure if he's killed it, killed him at all. Yeah, he, he's suffering PTSD. Yep. Um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He 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 questions. He he has no idea if he he killed him or not because he wouldn't remember. Yeah. And then of course there's Sebastian Seward. Uh, he's the butler. The butler. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he 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 hates everybody. His uh his master Malachi treated him like dog shit. Treated him worse than the stuff on the bottom of his boot. Okay. But he's a servant, and he's very proud of his profession and being a butler. So you never see that kind of resentment towards any of these people until now. Because his master's dead, and he might as well let it fly. And those are your six suspects. Yeah. So what's going to happen is I've got a series of three clues. You can ask each of them a question and I will answer to the best of my ability. And after those three clues, you guys need to figure it out. These people can also interact with each other. If you figure out how to do that, sure. like get up and accuse each other, you know, the kind of stuff you would see uh, in a detective show. Well, I, I feel like we have, since we have, well, we have two of us inside, one of us outside. Does uh, Harry ever enter to come involved with the questioning and to share his findings with the group? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Does he? Okay. Where's Terry? He's going to search around outside some more. So now he found some boots and some track. And did the investigation and found out outside you could break in pretty much anywhere. And I mean anywhere. Yeah, yeah, anywhere. Okay. It's ridiculous. Like, I was here yeah. already dead. Well, I mean, before this, but. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I can't say anything. I'm not going to say anything. All right, before questioning starts, I think I want to cast a zone of truth. That's a boy. Man. Man, I forgot I gave you this, but okay. Hey, it's a good thing Chuck didn't there. <laughs> Graybeard, <laughs> he was on it. Uh, you, you really want to cast that before? Like, yeah, right. uh, it, it's good for interrogating. Definitely. Well, Gary. During the interrogation, I think you should cast that spell. Well, it's like it's got an area, an area of effectiveness, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a cone-shaped thing. You're the starting point, and it goes out at a cone, cone-based thing. So I'm, I'm getting positioned so that I can catch them all in that. I'm, I cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, you, you know the logistics. I'm not going to make it difficult. Okay. Uh, It doesn't have to be a cone. I can just say, well, it, it, it covers the whole room. Of course, that means everybody, everybody. Oh, Jesus. Oh, My cat murdering tendencies are going to come through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Well, I would like to question this wife as long as I had Greybeard by me and her truth because, yeah, she seems all happy, but in my knowledge, it's... Uh, the one who's closest to you is the one who's got the most to gain, and that the wife is number one suspect there for me. Wait, I'm not saying you know wife killing is a 
number one. Oh, okay. So the wife of the dead guy is grandma. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. The uh, Penelope is. Oh, the brother's wife. Son's wife. Or the son's Penelope. wife. Okay, son's wife. Never mind. I had it written down wrong. I, I was. Okay, right. the son's wife. So she is not number one to me then, because it's son's wife. Basically, you be, you've got a uh, the wife, which is grandma stout, uh, a son and a daughter, and their wives and shit. All right, fine. Then I think we should start with grandma stout. He's a nice, whole cold bitch. So <laughs> I bet she is. Let's interrogate this skeezer actor. We're like. We got one question we can ask her because we can only interrogate three people. You said. No, I, I've got a series of clues set up. No, some of them are more than three. Some are less than three. I'm just gonna say that. But okay, just spend some time on this. So, well, since being the the highest counsel here underneath the commissioner, working for him, trying to find out this death, I want to talk to Grandma Stout. Okay. I want to ask her where she was on the night of the murder. Okay, that was just last night, by the way. Oh, where 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 she was last night? Was she with her husband? Was she home? She, says she was. Uh, she was getting ready to go to bed. She stopped in to uh, say good night to Malachi. Um. Yeah, they don't sleep in the same room. Uh, hmm. But he was a, a scoff old fool, and I needed my sleep, and he snored so loud. So, for the longest time, you know, they've been sleeping apart, but that's nothing new. I mean, that's kind of normal. Uh, so, while the interrogations he, are. Oh, sorry, go on. No, go ahead. While the interrogations are going, I'm going to make drinks for the six members. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll get back to you on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so she says, uh, but you know, uh, I saw Edwin... Uh, wandering about late in the halls that night before I went to bed, too. Uh, he was looking more deranged than normal. Uh, so what what could he have been doing up in the middle of the night for no reason? And that's what she says. Okay. Uh, let me get to Terry real quick. Um... As you go into the kitchen to make drinks for everybody, you are stopped by the butler. Can I help you, sir? Yes, I'm making drinks, and I am making the drinks. As you are, unfortunately right now, until we have cleared all suspicion, I need you to remain with the others. Um, very unusual, sir. It's unusual. That's why we were called in to help alleviate the problem. So sometimes an unusual approach is the best approach. Very well, sir. Call Thank me you. if you need help. Sure. I know where everything in the house is. Oh, he's smooth. Okay. okay. I don't like the butler either. <laughs> Well, it's the butler. He did it. <laughs> it's always the butler. What's the candle In the movie Clue, the butler's name was did it. <laughs> okay, so that's what Grandma said. Okay. I'm going to ask Edwin. Hey, Edwin, what were you doing last night? Grandma said she saw you out roaming around. Oh, 
shoot. Uh, Edwin said, give me a minute. I had to pull this up on the internet. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Hang them. <laughs> Totes did it. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah um he says I, I don't really remember what i was doing last night or or much about my past for, for that matter uh but it's it's certainly possible that that was happening Here, remember, Edwin doesn't know anything. He suffers from PST. He already thinks he killed him. Well, you're making drinks. Do you want to be uh, more specific about what kind of drink you're making? A dark drink. Something along the lines of, like, coffee. I, I need a real dark drink. Uh-oh. Or Pepsi. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's plenty of teas and coffees around. This house has no lacking of anything. Honestly. The only thing they don't have is poor, poor people living in their house, right? <laughs> Except the butler. <laughs> yep, maybe. Well, the butler's probably pretty uh, well off now. Well, the butler is Seward, or Sebastian, so... Sebastian, yep. Yeah. And he's an asshole. He hates everybody, but he doesn't show it because he's a good butler. Jobs everything. Well, he has lived in a world of uh, food for some 40 years. Yeah, he's been a slave his whole life. No, not a slave, a butler. And he will correct you on it. No. <laughs> It's just a fancy version. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Semantic. I got it. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, you guys figured it out yet? No. We got one more uh, interrogation to do. Well, that, are the drinks done? Are the drinks uh, done? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know how to make a drink. It doesn't take you long. I present them to the six that are still within the cone truth. Uh, okay. Uh, you, you get a lot of noses up on you and whatever. Uh, some people hint that you're the helps help. Oh, You know, they're, uh, they're, they're all lati da, uppity ups, snobs, <laughs> that kind of thing. Okay. Well, we're still into the truth. I wait for them to drink. At least take a drink. Uh, yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Well, you guys are gonna ask another round here. I, mean, yeah. I, I don't I'm know. I'm waiting. The, the next question comes after the drinks. Okay. Yeah, as I say, I was waiting for these drinks to be served personally because I think uh, he's got something up his sleeve with these drinks. So. Oh, I know well, he's got never up his sleeve. It's not for <laughs> not to have something up his sleeve. Um, a player knows his DM, but a DM knows his players. Yeah. Uh, also, outside meta knowledge, uh, this might get me arrested. So just. Be ready for that. Okay. No, you can surprise him. Well, I'm guessing it's a dark drink, so you put the black powder in them. I, I did. 
Oh, let's see what happens. They're all going to die. Um, problem solved. Grandma, oh, okay, so I'm going to say the ladies don't drink. They had uh -huh. drinks in their hand, and they were drinking only the finest champagne, which they did bring with them. Of course they did. Um, of course. <laughs> fucking hoity-toities. <laughs> Uncle doesn't drink because he's drinking beer. Uh, and Mortimer's the only one that takes a drink. Oh, and and, and you know, the the butler's definitely not gonna dine with his employers, his former employers. So Mortimer number three takes a drink. So the son is the only one that takes a drink. So son, and he had a good relationship for so. Let me recap and make sure I'm not missing anything just real quick. He had a semi-good relationship with his father. The only thing is, is though he's more about his money, where his father was more about his inventions. So he thinks in nothing but dollars and cents. Yes. Yeah, he knows money. His whole life and purpose is just to gain money. He doesn't care how much he has. He just likes gaining money. But uh, he, he didn't really have a hateful relationship with his father. He did the same thing his father did. So he had amicable relationship as far as what they both did. But you know, he, he grew up in a lap of luxury, so he never wanted anything. This is pure fantasy at this point, because I have no idea what that's really like. <laughs> <laughs> Not I, sir. Unlike Greybeard over there, who grew up in the lap of luxury, only had the <laughs> finest cows. <laughs> the finest wheels of cheese. Here, here. <laughs> the finest curds of the land. <laughs> Culver's. <laughs> Culver's. Now, now you're fired. <laughs> uh, I, I tell you what, you're gonna get Grandma Stout to drink the tea too. Nice, Grandma's gone. Well, I figured about <laughs> half of them. Sweet, so number one drinks. Were you, you questioning her, Grandma? And uh, yeah. I'll just leave it at that. He's an old tough broad. You, you slipped something in their drinks. What was it? I did not. Very, very important. I did not. Okay. Damn it. What did you put into the drink? I, a drink. Tea okay. Leaves? I mean, right. Damn it. I was right. hoping for them to feel well, over. I, I figured since you didn't slip something into the drink, you just might have blatantly put something into the drink. No, but now that a couple people and everybody's still under the effects of... Yes. Yes, the zone of truth will last for a little while. I am now going to simply go, okay, for those of you who have drunk and those of you who have not partaked, uh, just one simple question for everybody. I'm going to pull out the black vial. Okay. And as I'm pulling out, I am scanning the six to see if anybody shows any reaction, like have an inkling of knowing what it is. Like, oh, wait a minute, hold the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Why do you have that? Um, pull it out and go. So, this is the murder weapon. Well, not the weapon, but what did it? Some of you have just ingested it. <laughs> okay. So unless we're attending more funerals, somebody should probably start talking. Or, fuck it. We could all just uh, take a little sip. Make this, uh, make this a day to remember. Yeah. Sound like a cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> Love it.
Uh, okay, so... Uh, hmm. <laughs> so the reaction is from, uh, I'd say the women is like a gasp, like, oh, but they're not even drinking. Uh, grandma gets up and starts cussing you out and spitting and knocks the tea over and says, Sebastian, get over here and clean this up right in the way, you maggot son of, you know, being in her condescending ways. Mortimer says, uh, the tea tastes just fine. What was it? <laughs> so really no reactions that you know of. Everybody is being sincere since they're under spell to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. You, you don't see any surprise reactions other than somebody put something in my drink. What the hell? Kill him. You know, that kind of thing. Somebody's trying to kill me. That kind of reaction. Constable, arrest this man. You know, Absolutely none of them had a reaction to seeing it or none of them. And of course the women folk sans gam gam over there were taken back. You out, but that's what she does. Yeah. We got a question to Butler Sebastian. <laughs> What was that? Yes, sir. How may I help you? Sebastian, do you know anybody who would want to kill Malachi? Oh, I imagine there's several people that would like to kill Malachi. He was oh. a cruel man. You know, uh, I just overheard Malachi talking to Edwin about his will just uh, several nights ago. Malachi and Edwin. Malachi does a deed. Edwin profits from it. Because Edwin was the uncle. Or Malachi talks Edwin into doing it. Because Edwin doesn't know anything black, so does PSTSD. You know, he says, know. Uh, now that I think about it, uh, Uncle Edwin had also discovered the key's location during one of his bizarre midnight stumbling through the manners thing. Uh, and in rebuttal, he says, uh, keys? What keys? Uh, and he says, I don't really remember what I did last night or much about my past for that matter, but it's certainly possible. <laughs> You've heard this before. Yeah. So can we search Edwin to see if we, he still has these keys? Everybody search has been searched. Uh, what about their quarters? Uh, yeah, they, they've taken care of all this stuff. All you, oh, yeah, before all you know, the constable came in. Anybody yeah, walking with a limp? Any of that information, I can give it to you. So anyone walking with a limp? No other than Grandma, but she's old. Is there any signs of... So I assume they're donned in the finest drapes. Mm -hmm. uh, um, 
Is there any blood on... Nope. No, you're not going to find the clues you were looking for here. Or... So, uh, I approach the butler and go, so, you say you know where everything is in this house. He, uh, yeah, he takes care, he always took care of Malachi, so he knows everything. Mm-hmm. Penelope stands up, uh, the daughter of the deceased. Uh, showing her finest fur. You know, these finest furs were brought in from the mountains of so-and-so. It is mountain squirrel. Um, and these robes I have on were handmade or hand-spun by only the finest caterpillars in Spider City, which is really if you got that chestnut again. But that's going to be in every one. I every. know. <laughs> Surprised you didn't pick up on Mountain Squirrel, but okay. Oh, I did. I was going to let that one slide. But okay. Spider City not sliding. <laughs> it's going to be in every campaign I ever do. Uh. Yeah, and and she goes, I know that you commoners wouldn't understand such things, but I obviously think the murderer was trying to take that horrid coach outside. What did Father call it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It was the Royce Roller. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure somebody was trying to steal that thing and it got bogged down in the mud. And it obviously wasn't me that needed it. I came in my own carriage. And just then uh, the other girl, Penelope, stands up. Or not Penelope. Who's the other one? Damn, I'm losing it. Monica. 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 Uh, Monica stands up and says, well, so did me and Mortimer. We came on our own co- carriage. Toy, toy, bitch. Yeah, and I walked. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, Hush. it seemed like to your carriage envy. <laughs> Ooh, my horse is bigger than yours. I don't <laughs> care, people. I'm trying to figure out who killed the fucking father here. I just, yep. if you don't have anything actually relevant, I don't care about your status. Because you uh, know what you are? Meat bags. Shut up. Penelope leans over to you and says in a whispering voice, Uncle Edwin is known to be soft in the head, you know. There's rumors that after the war, he came home and killed a man with his bare hands in a bar. I yeah, that's out for that. yeah. Yeah. I will happily take the threat I can see versus the threat I cannot. For all I know, you did it. As a matter of fact, I'm leaning toward it because you're throwing so much hate toward, you know, Uncle not right in the head. Yeah, I think Penelope has something to do with this. She goes, you know, are, well, you know, you have means. You have motive. You have opportunity to employ one of us commoners to do your dirty work. So, how do we know it isn't you? Because what finer carriage is there than the one that's horseless? Well, they came in on a horse carriage. They're not inventors. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, um, what what finer carriage is there? Than the one that you don't need a horse for that drives itself. An ultimate status piece, if you will. You get around to asking Mortimer, the son, uh, 
he says, you know, I know that Sebastian the butler has been uh, a target of frequent abuse in the house at the hands of Malachi. And he knows about the pair of muddy boots that were found in the back. It might have slipped. The constable might have said something. I don't know. But uh, he says they were for a, a small shoe size. And since he wears a 13, there's no way his feet could have put in there. It's probably a woman's size, but... And he points out in the room that Penelope, his sister, has never gotten along with their parents, along with their parents at all. Uh, pretty sure she's the only one that came to the reunion because she's worried about the inheritance. So. Yeah, I'm thinking it's Penelope paid someone to have them done. She has no clue about the nightshade because she didn't do it herself. <laughs> um, in, in response to about her not getting along with her parents, she says, that's absurd. You don't, you say, I don't get along with my parents. I've always loved them more than any else in life. She's sincere. She may not seem sincere, but she's definitely sincere. Her general attitude makes her seem unsincere. Not sincere? Yeah. Insincere? Yeah, that's it. We never questioned Penelope. I only got questionnaires on two. Well, that was Penelope. Uh, does anybody else have any uh, inquiries on there? I think it could have been Mortimer because he had the most motive. He's all about money. The wife, I mean... All these people could conspire against to have this happen. So I think it could have been a little bit everybody, but if we would narrow it down to one stock fact. Monica. I, uh, she wanted to make Morty richer. Yeah. And wanted to help him with his success. Okay. Also, how sure is the constable that it is one of these six? How do we know he's not just that inept at his job? Uh, you don't. So my boss would never just tell anyone like that. Be be because if, if the constable did it wrong, then I wasted four hours setting up for this game. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you gotta ask, you know, just... Sebastian, uh, the butler. Oh, he the says, butler. Uh, you guys... I told you that one. Let's see. <clears throat> he says, I wear a size 13 shoe. March, which is actually much larger than uh, the boots out there, so it couldn't have been him. Yeah, he's conspiring with... Providing those boots were used in the murder at all. Uh, you know, he says, now that I think of it, Uncle Edwin had also discovered the key's location... To the uh, missing property. Yeah, because Edward Ed. Five, six, five. And Sebastian knew where and, the key. And, and anytime somebody suggests that the butler did it, he just kind of rolls his eyes and he goes, Yeah, of course the butler did it. <laughs> In a sarcastic tone. Where's. Um, oh god, dead dude. Dead dude. <laughs> I looked at the door. Someone's at the door, yep. Or, or someone went to the bathroom. 
or someone shut a door. Or the guy, you know, the next day to over walk out of the door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where is the dead guy's uh, study? Malachi study. Uh, well, the dead guy is still in it. It's upstairs in one of the rooms, I guess. Uh, we'll leave everything on the first floor. Study's on the first floor somewhere. I want to go actually into that room. Okay. I want to follow him. Let's go interrogate the study. Let's go check it out. I want to see you if the walls talk, him. I'm out. We're not interrogating <laughs> the study. If the walls out, mm-mm, no. Mm-mm. <laughs> the walls start to bleed and you hear, get out. I'm gone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Let the people in black no, coat, put the nightshade in everyone's drinks, and walk away, and all six are dead. Problem solved. Things I'm not dealing with. Talking house. No, no, no. We have fire for that. Okay. <laughs> well, you're in the study. There's a desk, a um, couple of files, paperwork on the desk, uh, some stuff, shelves. You know, it's what you expect to see in a study. Little quill pen, you know, that kind of thing. Does anything look like hard rummage through? Uh, yeah, roll, roll the die. Okay, uh, you want 20 or percentile? 20. No, 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 no. That was a 19. Do you wait for me to talk every time? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yes, because you're talking to the dog. You just don't know it. <laughs> That's a one. You rolled a one. 19. Not the 19. Okay, well, you didn't need to show it to me. I'll I'm take the word for it. Muting, not no muting, no muting, not muting. So yeah, I yeah. I'd show you the roll real quick. Oh, okay. Well, I would have said it was a one. Um, yeah, you find a stack of papers, and in that stack of papers, there's one that's set off to the side. Somebody has obviously gone through the stack of papers at some time. Um, hmm, where's those stack of papers going? You see a, a last will and testament, and the the bottom part has been ripped. Uh, yeah. Are we in possession of that bottom part? Yes. Lines up just perfect. Just, yep, that belongs to that. One and one makes yeah. two here. It says... Uh, Malachi signed and witnessed this will and testament, and so forth and so forth and so on. And you got the will and testament part that says will. So on the guys. will, yeah. who stands to inherit the inventions? Of, the butler. Who stands to gain? The butler. Okay, the, the butler, butler obviously did not do it. Very clearly did not do it. Everything is... Going to the butler. Yeah, and he was only a, a few short years away from retiring from this gig, and he would have tired okay, you know. But... Uh, no, his, his, his boss beat the living crap out of him all the time and berated him and stuff. Now, compared to the handwriting of the document above it, the piece of paper we have, and the other papers on, does it look like the same handwriting? Meaning, yep. this isn't a forgery. Nope, this is not a forgery. So... I call the butler into the study. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, 
all the fun jokes of <laughs> Butler did it. Yeah, I get it. Trust me. Us common folks in the hoity toities. I know you can't speak bad about your employer. Trust, I'll do it for you. I got no problem with that. So, it has come to light that it very clearly you did not do it. I'm well aware that you've been saying you haven't done it, but you have to understand we have to go through the process. You didn't do it because you stand to get everything. We have the other half of the document. You were going to inherit everything. So somebody did not want that to happen. So we're going to ask for the full and unbridled cooperation from you. And uh, to be perfectly honest, your employers were about to fuck you out of a lot. So uh, let's drop the pretense that they're, they're your employers because dad's money, my dude. And like, let's find who killed him and tried to rob you of what... I can only imagine should be rightfully yours. He says, look, look. You, I, I think you're mistaken. You must have been mistaken. Amalekai may have uh, dis disciplined me and, and treated me like crap. And, and I might have been a little uh, resentful and angry about that. But as a well-trained butler, I certainly never let any of my anger show. But, you know, of course, the butler did it. Oh, yeah. And like I said, we have the documents here proving that you were going to get the wealth. Yeah, I, I, I can't explain that. I didn't know about this. Well, somebody did. Who else has access to this study? Does the study normally stay locked? with only one key, or is it free reign? Well, since uh, all the guests have arrived, I would say that all the guests that have arrived had access. Did you notice any one person in particular coming out yesterday being extremely upset, almost shocked, maybe maybe disgusted by a conversation that they had with the master of the estate? Uh, the only people that he's seen wandering the halls that later last night were Edwin, and uh, he did see his wife. Uh, yeah, that's it. Gam Gam or Penelope, wife? Which one? Oh, uh, Malachi's wife, Grandma. Grandma. Right, grandma, Grandma, and Edwin. Can't believe Grandma killed him when she realized she was about to get yeeted out of money. Edwin. Also, have we determined the cause of death on the body? Uh, poison. I'm gonna say uh, he was stabbed. <laughs> oh, he was stabbed. It doesn't really matter. He, he's dead. I mean, well, yeah, but the cause not going to play into the story. How it happens is maybe important. Yeah, I thought he, he was, was poison. Not poison. <laughs> not poison. Yeah. Um, he was stabbed. Um, these two things do not equal four. Um, stabbed in the back, in the chest. Uh, yeah, pick one. Back. Back. They was killed in the so back he while he was it. revising his will and testament. So he doesn't even know his murderer. He was stabbed in the back. What was he found in his study? Sure. Is there any cameras in the study? Colonel Mustard did it with the dagger in the study. Was there um, any cameras in the study? No. <laughs> cameras? They don't exist back then. Magical. Ma oh, now hold on. Because magical like um, recording devices and things like that could technically exist. Yeah, technically okay. they could. I've created them before, but no, not. No. Not here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to beat my cat up in a minute. 
Chuck, do you have any inquiries over here, buddy? Please, I'm running out of <laughs> trying to think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a problem we all have sometimes. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to go run any mile. murder mysteries past you guys again. We'll just stick to killing shit. Yeah, well, I just think uh, Grandma and Edwin had something to do with it. Because my, uh, my solution to the problem is not a good solution. <laughs> have to go back to my yeah, old well, ways. I agree with you, Terry. I think we should just, uh, you know, nightshade everybody and we uh, caught the I murder. Can solve six individual problems. Right now. They're all dead and we can leave and case all. Well, that can't happen. Somebody's got to hang. Well, I mean, we could hang all six of them. Well, hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. no. See, so the Constable others came in on a carriage. Yes, they're so they had drivers. Cars. Yes. Can we? I don't know if we have the power to summon people. Or if we have to get the constable to do it, whatever, whichever way we have to go about it. Can we summon the drivers? We can, but they didn't see anything. They've already been released. Any of them walking with a limp? <laughs> no, nobody's walking with a limp, Terry. I'm going to keep asking it. You know this. Okay, and eventually you might find that person. <laughs> I, it's in the back of my head. So, oh. I mean, I know who it was, but you don't. Right. But it was none of these people. Butler didn't do it. Gam gam. Gam gam. Shit for brains. He's got money. Brothers want the her uncle. son. He's easy to manipulate. He's PTSD. I don't even know what he did. See. Who discovered Back, the body? And the uncle's got the keys. Uh, grandma. Whose boots are on the back steps? Grandma. All oh, those are grandmas? Well, they got to be small. There's smaller footprints out there. It was either grandma's or the uh, son's wife, which was... Monica. Monica. Either Grandma's or Monica or the daughter, which is Penelope. Those are the smaller uh, side shoes, unless the butler has a little baby girly feet. But no, he already stated he has size 13. I swear I'm about to start solving problems my way. I swear to God. Um... We might only send one to the gallows, but it doesn't mean we can't send all six of them to the grave. Dead. Yeah, you we... got a cleric in the group that will stop you upon doing this. If he does not, then the hand of God will stop you from doing this. Well, the warrior in the group starting to agree with you. <laughs> but I'm thinking at least um, Gamma and Edward. Female boots to try to pull that through. Pull the carriage out. Gam Gam wouldn't be strong enough to pull it out. Uh, as you looked around the uh, desk where the wheel was, you noticed a, a hidden compartment in the, uh, we'll just say it's a roll top desk. Okay. Uh, you uh, see a little hidden compartment. And there is a key lock on it. The drawer is pulled open, and it's empty, empty inside. But when they were talking about keys, that's probably what the keys they were talking about in the missing merchandise. Can we search Uncle Ed's room or Meathead room? I don't remember his name now. Yeah, Edwin. Okay. Uncle Edwin. Uh, can I search his room? Yeah, sure. Aaron. He only. Yeah, he. Uh... Sure. Yes. You you search his room and nothing. 
hidden compartments, you know, floor loose floorboards. Uh, you, you come across some medals that he earned in the war. About it. No giant signs that say I done it. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the rooms have been pretty well checked out. Really? Because they the, missed the hidden. The, they didn't the tell us about the hidden note, Yeah, well, the hidden compartment wasn't. Uh, let's just say uh, the DM forgot to add that little spicy tidbit. Gotcha. It's already been noticed, but that's where the keys go that other people were talking about. And we yeah, have no idea where the keys are because. Edwin has forgotten. No, but some of the people have implicated other family members as having keys on them last night. Yeah, and the keys was Edwin and Sebastian were the only two that had access to the keys the other night. Super clue, the keys will help you figure it out. And everybody's been searched. There's no hidden compartment. They don't have any hidden pouches on them. Weaved no. into their fine clothes. Everyone's Edwin Sebastian had knowledge of the keys the night before. Edwin doesn't know anything because he's PTS Sebastian. Edwin says Sebastian could have done it because it wasn't the butler. I think it was Sebastian. Butler did it. Okay. Uh, let's see. One Edwin says. Uh, when Edwin said, you know, where the keys were, he, uh, he says that Grandma had them, too. Well, so we got her grandma in the mix, too, so it's number one. Uh, wait a minute. I'm looking for the other people that had something to do with me. <laughs> uh, Edwin's back. Where are the two? Okay. I think. One. Okay. And let's see. Uh, he looks at the butler and he says, You knew about the keys too. And he goes, Yes, I knew where the keys were. It's my job to know those things. That proves nothing. So, where are the keys now? Asking the butler, just where are they now? Uh, the constable has. It comes back down to grandma. Grandma did it. Wife. I walked to the constable and be like, Can I see the keys? Yeah, hand you the keys. Thanks. How many keys are here in present? Is it just one key? Uh, Is it a ring of them? Yeah, it, it's a ring of two keys, but they're identical keys. Maybe Dude, one opens the roll top desk, one opens the little uh, hidden compartment thing. What you doing, Chuck? Everything's open, though, right? The desk and the compartment are open. Yeah. Your deductive reasoning, you have reasoned that the murderer must have something to do with the keys. So that narrows it down to three people. Yeah. Grandma, Sebastian, and Edward. Yeah, and I'm not giving you any more hints. you got to figure it out on your own. Otherwise, all these people are going to go free. Sebastian... Has the most to gain from an intact will, so why would it be destroyed? Who are you asking? <laughs> Just thinking out loud. Stating out loud that he has the most to gain from an intact will, so why would he destroy it and you know take it out of the study when that clearly gives him everything? So why would he damage that? That makes. 
That's just not correct. Damage it enough to the point to where it's still recognizable and readable and legible, which will throw everyone off his scent. Could very well. You know, another fun question I'd like to ask the dead thief of how the fuck he came in possession of him, but you know, we'll uh, save that question for, you know, Queefer. When I stab yeah. him in the afterlife. Thank you for being a plot device. Too bad you couldn't die, you know, five minutes later. That's just that's just a dick move. You just how you gonna how you just gonna eh, like come on, dude. Um Yeah, so I have it down to three Soldiers probably not doing it. Everybody's implicating him, which means a little plot decoy device. There's literally everybody's implicated him, and he's even implicated himself. Or the wife seen that she that he would left everything to. Sebastian tried to get rid of the evidence and killed anyway, her husband. Well, the way Gam Gam treated Sebastian was like the help. And this thing of the will, nobody. My poker, poker, poker face. My poker, poker, poker face. Fuck it, the butler did it. All right, I agree. Chuck, we're all in. I ain't got a fucking. I. Oh god, I like the butler did brain for this shit. Gab, gab. Cause he knows where the keys are. Which okay, means well, you make that accusation. The, the constable goes, "Are you sure?" No. This man's gonna hang tomorrow. We are the trial and jury. How do we know it wasn't a group of individuals conspiring? Why does it only have to be one? Because Boy, that's not how this plot works. Yeah, gotcha. and we know it was one, one, five, or six. So we knew it was Gam, Gam, Edwin, or the butler, Sebastian. It was either the wife. The brother, the, wife, the brother, or the butler, or the butler. It's one of those three. Um, so the will being ripped, I really don't want to say it's the butler. I, like, I, why would he destroy it? No, no, crawl, no. I, I said the super clue that I'm gonna hand to you as a gift is. The murderer had something to do with the keys. Yep. And the wife, the Penelope or whatever her name, had no. No, no Gam Gam is the wife of Gam the dead. Gam Gam is the oh, wife of the oh, dead the grandma. Oh. Yeah, the grandma, the wife of the deceased, the grandma. Okay. Yep. Or the butler, or Sebat, or no, Sebastian, or Edwin. Uncle. Yeah, Uncle Crazy. Honestly, you know what? Let's go with pack one, pick one. You see it on every cop show and every detective show ever. It's the fucking wife. It's the wife. I show up dead tomorrow. Who are you going to expect first? I'll give you a hint. Hey! The dog. Yeah. No, it's it's 90% of the time it's it's the wife or the husband. The dog wants to get rid of you, Terry, so he can have... Uh... Andrea by him for himself. No, firing with the butler or the uncle, but it was the wife. He did it. <laughs> it's Gam Gam. Gam Gam did it. Final answer. Yep. Gam Gam did it. Okay, tell me why. Constable wants to know why. They already sleep in different bedrooms. She wants the wealth without none of the headaches. She's sick of getting poked in the back every night. She's sleeping with Sebastian. Wow. Well, she more often sleeping with the uncle because Sebastian is a hired help. As, as he knows. frantically scribbles that down, like, oh, that's actually pretty good. 
D and D CSI. <laughs> it was the wife. It was the wife, simply because we have an intact document. If you push these pieces together, Sebastian has the most to gain. So yeah, why would he okay. destroy the document? So, is it Sebastian or the wife or Uncle Crazy? I'm eliminating the other two. That okay. way, Occam's Razor says it's the wife. It's the wife. Only, only if you're outside the box, Jerry. Um. Oh wait, that's that's somebody else's box. Never mind. Yeah. Uh. So Sebastian, why would he destroy the document? That makes no sense. Crazy. Uncle Crazy is just the easiest patsy I've ever seen. Yeah. For fuck's sake, he doesn't even know if he can't even tell us for a fact if he did it or not. That is such an easy fall guy. That is a free yeah. layup. Yep. I could frame him. And well, ignore that statement. Um yeah. <laughs> oops. The uncle's easily framed. Very uh also the if somebody was attempting to steal the coach. Step one, the boots are size and uncle size. Also, he probably, being an ex-military, has enough strength to probably dislodge it from it being stuck, so it would be gone. So yep. therefore, let's go ahead and eliminate him again. So that only leaves Gam Gam. Gam Gam go did on. it. It's just so cruel to put a grandma and watch her hang. <laughs> Hell, I'll do it right now. Okay. Well, uh, Constable uh, says, yeah, well, that makes all perfect sense. Uh, you got to let me look that up. So the, uh, the policemen come in and put her in chains. She uh, she goes into a, a bit. Well, I almost got away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. <laughs> Um, Finger guns. Scooby Doo. I've, I've actually got a, a thing that when she spills her guts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I could help with that. Well, yeah, you, not you that kind of you, oh, yeah, right. you know damn well what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't stabbed anything all day. <laughs> That's okay. We figured out Gam Cam did it. Uh, we struggled yeah. for us and figured out Gam Gam did it. First thing I said it's the wife. She did it. I wanted to be the butler so bad. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, you. She says uh, I lived in that house, this household, nearly all my life, always under the thumbs of Malachi, who ruled over our household like a tyrant. Spiteful and crew. I'm glad he's dead. Malachi made my life a living hell for at least 45 years. Damn, that's <clears> ancient. <throat> now, time. as a final straw in a series of indignants of me living with him and putting up with all of his hateful comments, he's at the very last minute changed his will to go to his butler of all people <laughs> a low life scum butler uh, <laughs> including the precious oh yeah uh, she's got the jewels um, the butler of all people um <laughs> When uh, uh, Malachi's brother shared his information with, uh, with who's it say? He uh, nearly had a heart attack. He won't let this NDC stand. Oh, yeah. Uh, his brother, uh, Uncle Edwin, shared the information about the will changing to Grandma. So that's when she learned about this indignant thing about all the family money going to the butler and it was at that time she uh, decided to make sure that didn't happen and that's that's the deal there so she's carted away in chains everybody else is 
kind of la di da about it. I well, can't believe mm -hmm. Grandma did this or Gam Gam. It's Nana in my family. So, uh, uh, yeah, congratulations. You solved the murder. That's uh, awesome. The constable says, hey, man, thanks. Uh, if we ever have anything again, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get in touch. This goes a long way to uh, establishing a a presence here in the city. Uh, a known presence. I'm not going to say it gives you anything, but uh, yeah, we'll think of you before we think of somebody else. Yeah, so we get good reputation with the city folk. Right. It'll, it'll help your reputation and standing within the city. Sweet. Oh, I definitely want you to remember my name. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm um, Queef. Yeah, Queef. I'm definitely not dead. Queef, the dead guy. I'm not the dead guy, Queef. I'm the live guy, Queef. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what I had planned for you today. Uh, guys did. Okay, look. You know, sorry it wasn't interesting enough. I'll not do a murder mystery again. Uh, and, uh, I just had to find out if you guys could handle it or not, so I know how to build future dungeons. Yeah, no, I'm going into the caves next week and trying to finish the lower levels out. That's yeah, no, it was pretty fun. I thought it was uh, his wife from the beginning, though, because that's just ninety percent of the time it's the wife, especially when she had motive when he was giving everything away to the butler. I've been wanting to put a game together. I want to do a murder, host a murder, yeah. yeah. But certain things uh, put a quash on that, like the plague. So <laughs> that, that prevented me from having one of those. But uh, yeah, this 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 was a fairly easy one. It shouldn't take more than a half an hour, but there's different ways, and I had to work things out. And it only took us two hours and twenty one minutes. Yeah. Yep. Um. Okay. So that's today's have the logical it goes up levels until we clear out all of level one for the caves. Um, and at that point, maybe I'll give you a boost up to level two. Sweet. 